As we near the 2024 election, 538 has released their new election prediction model for the 2024 race, and today I'm going to map it out in all 50 states. But before we look at it, let's talk about what this model is. It's not just polling. Polls are part of it, but the model also looks at the economy. It looks at incumbency. And with polls, it rates the polls based on their past accuracy. If the polls have bias, if they're sponsored by a candidate or by someone who's leaning towards a candidate, all these factors make it a hopefully more accurate model than just polling alone. And we're going to look at an early stage in this race of a map based on this model. So right here you see the blank map, but up at the top you see the key. We're going to be rating states and electoral votes from solid D to solid R, and in between you see likely, lean, and toss-up states where it could go either direction. So let's start by heading towards Washington on the West Coast. Washington, Biden has a 95 out of 100 chance of winning. Shouldn't be a surprise, so that's probably going to be a likely D. If I were writing this, I would give it a solid D, but 538 has it at likely. Now, if we go down to Oregon, Oregon actually is slightly less liberal than Washington. Oregon is 94 out of 100 for Biden, but also still in that likely D category. Now, when you go down to California, this is our first state that meets the requirements for the solid D category. And if you look at the writing here, Biden has over 99 out of 100 in his chance of winning. So California is definitely a solid D. Now, here are two contentious states, Nevada and Arizona. These are both states in the Sun Belt. The Sun Belt is an area that went for Biden primarily in 2020. But now it looks like it's leaning back towards Trump. Look at this. Nevada, Trump has a 56 out of 100 chance of winning. Arizona, Trump has a 53 out of 100 chance of winning. So right now these would lean towards Trump. But that being said, they still land in that toss-up center category. If we head north of Arizona to Utah, this is a solid R, 99 out of 100 for Trump. And it's a similar theme in Idaho, over 99 out of 100 for Trump. We jump over to Montana, 97 for Trump. That actually pushes that state down to the likely R category. Wyoming, back to the solid R category, over 99 out of 100. Those states shouldn't be a surprise. That really is Trump stronghold. Now we head to Colorado. We're back to the Biden side. Colorado is 91 out of 100 for Joe Biden. That puts him in the likely Democrat category. Very similar in New Mexico, though slightly more conservative, Biden at 83. Okay, now we hop over to a state that shouldn't be a huge surprise. It's Texas. Now Texas has been leaning more liberal over the years. But if you look at this model, it is at 79 out of 100, which is still very conservative, enough to put it into the likely Republican category. Though interesting to note, it's on the lower end of the likely Republican category. Okay, now over to Oklahoma, which is a solid Trump win, over 99 out of 100, up to Kansas in a likely Republican, 95 out of 100, and now up to Nebraska. Nebraska does things a little bit differently with how they divide up their electoral votes, but really Nebraska's, the majority of their electoral votes will go towards Trump, 98 out of 100. Up to South Dakota and North Dakota, both solid Republican states, over 99 for Trump. That shouldn't be a surprise either. Okay. We are now over to Minnesota. Minnesota is definitely a solid state for Biden, but actually it's in the lean Democrat category. Not a great sign for Biden, but currently there he's at 72 out of 100. Minnesota is traditionally a Democrat stronghold, so it shouldn't be a surprise to see Biden ahead, 
but surprising that it's in lean Democrat and not in likely. That's something to watch. Down to Iowa. A Trump win, likely Republican. Similar theme in Missouri, though even more conservative. Trump at 96. Arkansas, Trump over 99. Solid R, shouldn't be a surprise. Similar theme in Louisiana, though it barely goes back down into the likely Republican category. Okay, well now we're going to do things a little bit differently. We've been moving from west to the east. Now we're going to move from the south to the north along the east coast. So let's start with Florida. Florida is a lean Republican, but you can see it's almost likely Republican. Florida used to be a swing state. You look at the Bush versus Gore election, definitely a close race there. But now Florida has been shifting more conservative. And we see that here, lean Republican, the right on the edge of likely Republican. Okay, Mississippi, 97 out of 100 for Trump. Shouldn't be a surprise. Similar thing in Alabama, but even more conservative, 99 over 99 for Trump. Now, Georgia is another one of those Sun Belt states. And like I said, Biden took these back in 2020, but they're leaning more towards Trump now. And we see that here. Trump, 58 out of 100 in Georgia. Up to South Carolina, my home state, definitely heading towards Trump. Something similar in North Carolina, though North Carolina is more liberal than South Carolina, but still leaning towards Trump. Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, all solid wins for Donald Trump. Now, over to Virginia. This one's interesting because there has been some hope in past years of Republicans taking Virginia. That is not happening. Here you see Biden, 78 out of 100 in the likely Democrat category. Virginia will go to the Democrats. A similar situation in Illinois, where Biden is at 94. Now, Indiana and Ohio, both are conservative states. Ohio especially is now in the likely Republican category. Not as much a swing state as it used to be, and definitely heading towards Trump. Now we have the big three. You see them outlined. These are Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, Biden is at 56. Michigan, 58. And Pennsylvania, 56. These three states are what Biden needs to hold to keep the presidency, and he appears to be doing it. You see, Biden can lose the Sun Belt states if he can keep all three, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. And then we go up into the North East. Not much to say here because the Northeast is a Biden stronghold to varying degrees, but if you look at New York, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, other than Maine's districts, they have a second district that is conservative. It's all going towards Biden. Okay, that's a lot right there. We just went through all 50 states. I should mention Alaska, which will go to Trump, and Hawaii, which will definitely go to Biden. But there you have all 50 states. Really, a whirlwind. Let's kind of back up and talk about takeaways. Right now, if we actually look at the electoral math of what I just showed you, on the electoral vote standpoint, that actually puts Biden ahead. And we see this in 538's forecast. They see 519 scenarios where Biden wins, 477 where Trump wins, and four with no winner. They say Biden wins 52 times out of 100, Trump wins 48 times out of 100. So 538 does think that Biden's ahead. But all it takes is for Trump to gain a little more ground. Just one of those northeastern states, and suddenly this whole thing is shifting in Trump's favor. If the Sun Belt does switch towards Trump, that's a very strong start for him. This race is close. We will continue to watch it. We'll continue to analyze it. And I thank you for joining today. We'll see you in the next video.